Hey, what's up? Josh here with the Wild West Extravaganza. Just touching base and coming at you with a few recommendations. Just a reminder, the Wild West Extravaganza is returning next Wednesday, where we'll be kicking off the Billy the Kid series. I'm really excited for this one. Been putting a lot of work into it. Just need to finalize it. But yeah, next Wednesday, bright and early, episode one will drop. And of course, the entire series will be available in full, ad-free on Patreon as well, if you're the impatient sort. Next, I'd like to answer an email that I received about three months ago. This comes from Philip. My bad, bro. Uh, I did mean to do this a lot sooner, but you know how that be. Philip wrote, I love your show. I was excited to learn about vampires in your recent Frank Canton episode. I am also thankful you put the Huckleberry argument to rest. My new passion is reading westerns. My boys bought me all the Louis L'Amour novels for Christmas the last few years. They are a great escape. They are like Hallmark movies, but with killing. Lots of killing. I've also started to read some William W. Johnston westerns. My question is, do you like western fiction? And if so, do you have a favorite author? Keep up the good work. Thank you, Philip. And I did uh, kind of forget about the whole vampire angle to Frank Canton. Just one of history's mysteries, you know? Can we prove that Frank Canton was a blood-sucking vampire feeding off the souls of the innocent in his quest for eternal life? No, we can't. But we can't prove he wasn't either. And that's all I was trying to say. Now, to answer your question, I do love Western fiction, even though I don't have nearly as much time for it nowadays as I used to. And I do have a favorite author. Hands down, Larry McMurtry. I consider Lonesome Dove to be the pinnacle. I think it's one of the greatest stories ever told. I think I've probably read the entire book cover to cover at least a couple dozen times. Even if you've seen the miniseries, I highly recommend checking out the book. Uh, there's just a lot that they didn't include. There are three other books that go along with Lonesome Dove. Streets of Laredo, Dead Man's Walk, and Comanche Moon. They're all good, but I don't think any of them come close to what Lonesome Dove is. They are worth reading, though. My recommendation would be not to read them in chronological order. Start with Lonesome Dove, then read the sequel, Streets of Laredo, and then go back and read the two prequels. Not everything that McMurtry wrote was a Western, but some of his other stuff I really enjoyed in the Western vein was Anything for Billy, Telegraph Days, and The Last Kind Word Saloon. If you don't mind stepping out of the Western genre, his Dwayne Moore series is excellent. There's also the Barry Bender series, which does take place in the West, but gotta be honest, I never got into those. I might need to revisit them, though. After Larry McMurtry, I'd say another favorite author is Cormac McCarthy, of course. Blood Meridian is obviously a masterpiece. All the Pretty Horses, not technically an Old West novel, uh, but pretty dang close. It's also really good. Matter of fact, you might want to start with All the Pretty Horses, if Blood Meridian's a little too heavy, just to kind of familiarize yourself with McCarthy. But all of his stuff is really amazing. And if you're not familiar, he's the guy that wrote No Country for Old Men and The Road, if you've ever seen that movie. Other Western fiction authors I've really enjoyed in the last few years. Um, check out a guy named Mike Blakely. His book Moon Medicine is phenomenal. It's also much more of a quote-unquote fun read than any of the other books I've mentioned so far. Kind of remind me of Little Big Man, if you've ever read that or seen that movie. If you have any interest in the Alamo or Texas history, I really enjoyed Stephen Harrigan's The Gates of the Alamo. Thought he did a great job of bringing the historical characters to life. He also has another very interesting novel titled Remember Ben Clayton. I think it's kind of set in like the 1920s, but one of the main characters was an older guy who, as a child, was abducted by natives. Uh, the Homesman is really good by Glendon Swarthout. Swarthout? I have no idea how to pronounce his last name. He's the same guy that wrote The Shootist, the John Wayne movie it's based off of. Michael Punk is good at historical fiction. He's the guy behind The Revenant. And he recently published Ridgeline, which is about the Fetterman fight. Uh, so those are just a few recommendations, but I don't think I'm really answering your question. All these are a little bit different from Louis L'Amour and William W. Johnston. So let's start with L'Amour. I like his stuff a lot. As a kid, his books were always laying around. I've read many, many Louis L'Amour books. And off the top of my head, some of my favorites are Bendigo Shafter, uh, The Quick and the Dead, Not to be Mistaken, for the movie with the same name. And I think it's called the Sackett brand. It's the one where uh, I think Tell Sackett's being hunted in the mountains by a bunch of bad guys. Also, don't sleep on Louis L'Amour's short story collections. One in particular that I loved and will often return to is titled With These Hands. 
They're not all Western stories, but they are really good. Matter of fact, I would go so far as saying his short stories are better than some of his full-length novels. Now, as far as William W. Johnston goes, boy, oh boy, I've been wanting to talk about this guy on the podcast for a while. I've got kind of a love-hate relationship with Mr. Johnston. May he rest in peace. On one hand, the Wild West extravaganza would almost certainly not exist were it not for Johnston. I devoured his Smoke Jensen and Preacher books when I was a little kid. I'm talking like 10, 11, 12-year-old Josh. And credit to where credit's due, man. A lot of my love for the Old West comes from reading William W. Johnston books. Uh, I read some of his series on Jamie McAllister. I even got into the really weird post-apocalyptic Ashes series. Man, trust me on this one. You order that book now, you're going to end up on a list. If I were to recommend anything by Johnston, it would only be those early Preacher Smoke Jensen books. Anything after that, from what little I've read, I just don't think they're good. Nine out of ten of them weren't even written by Johnston. They were published well after his death. And to me, they're all the same. It's the good guy. He's always very stereotypically good. He's six and a half feet tall, solid muscle, yet ruggedly handsome. The women love him. He can draw and shoot with both hands equally as well. He speaks several languages. The bad guys are pure evil. There's, you know, very little shades of gray. The hero will always be outnumbered. He'll be shot, but it's either going to be in the shoulder or the fleshy part of his side. So, you know, the bullet doesn't hit anything vital. And he'll end up killing 40 or 50 bad guys before the book's over. Take that same recipe and just change out the character names, and you've got almost all of the William W. Johnston novels that you can find in stores nowadays. And I say this without passing judgment because they are fun. You know, you mentioned books being a great escape with a lot of killing. And yeah, and in essence, that is William W. Johnston. And I hope it doesn't make me sound snobbish when I say that. I genuinely love Blood Meridian and Lonesome Dove. And it is hard to go from those to Smoke Jensen, for instance. I do like my main characters to be somewhat flawed. I know I myself am very flawed. And I do like a hint of realism. With many of these Walmart westerns, as I sometimes refer to them, the main hero is just too much of a hero for my taste. Uh, it just seems more like fantasy, cosplaying as a western to me. I don't know. But you know, once again, they can be fun reads. And we all need a nice little fun escape every now and then. If you're looking for like more of a middle ground with a little bit more depth, but still not Blood Meridian deep, then you should definitely check out author Terry C. Johnston. He's got two series in particular, the Titus Bass series that follows a fur trapper named Titus Bass and the Frontiersman series with the fictional Seamus Donegan character. Both of these characters kind of follow along with real events that happen throughout the West. And Johnson seems to have done a lot of research in his writing. He's still got a lot of fiction in there. There's still uh, the really corny R-rated scenes, if you will. But to me, I do think they are better than most of your William W. Johnston books. And they're still fun. And of course, you can't go wrong with a lot of the classics, stuff written by Zane Gray or Elmer Kelton. By the way, this is not my definitive guide to Western fiction. Just a very quick, hey, these are some recommendations. I do have a tab on my website titled Books. It's just a link to an Amazon list with a lot more recommendations, if you're interested. Disclaimer, those are affiliate links, meaning that if you buy one of the books, it costs you no extra money, but I'll get like a tiny percentage. I think all total, I've made like less than $2 off these uh, affiliate links. So yeah, link in the show notes for that, or you can just go to wildwestextra.com, click on the books link in the navigation bar, and you'll be taken to a page with the options of fiction, nonfiction, or impactful books. Click on the fiction and check out some more that you might enjoy. And I do need to add a lot more to that list, by the way. Something else for me to work on. Okay, Philip, I hope I helped a little. I hope you got some recommendations, and I hope you keep on reading. Read one for me while you're at it. I'm about tired of reading all these nonfiction books. Maybe I need a William W. Johnston novel or two thrown my way. All right, uh, next... I do have a couple of corrections. On my recent Jim Bridger series, I repeatedly referred to Sir William Drummond Stewart as Sir Walter Drummond Stewart. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking other than I've uh, been reading a lot about Walter Noble Burns. They both got three names. I don't know. Got a lot of Walter Noble Burns on my brain. Dude just keeps showing up everywhere. He's even going to be on the upcoming Billy the Kid series. Also, 
I mentioned the 11 Bang Bang YouTube channel, and I stupidly referred to host Garrett as Garrett Levi or Levi Garrett or something dumb like that. No idea what I was thinking. His name is Garrett Woods. And as it turns out, he's a pretty cool dude. I recently had the honor of sitting in with Garrett on his YouTube channel, 11 Bang Bang. Link in the show notes for that episode, and I really had a good time. Also in attendance was Duke from Duke Frazier Productions and Snappers Antique Firearms Unlimited, along with Garrett's brother Ethan, who also uh, you can find on the 11 Bang Bang channel. I hope I'm getting that right. Y'all are brothers, right? Watch, now I'm going to have to make another correction to my correction. I think they're brothers. All these guys do have YouTube channels, Duke Frazier Productions, Snappers Antique Firearms, 11 Bang Bang. Check them all out. They're all pretty Old West gun heavy uh, as far as content. A lot of old revolvers and rifles. But all these guys know their Old West history probably more than I do. So you'll definitely learn you something. Links to all of their channels in the show notes. And I think Garrett and Ethan are veterans. I assume the 11 Bang Bang is a reference to the, by God, United States Army Infantry. But uh, you'll have to ask them. I love talking with these guys. I want to be their friends in real life. And I hope I get to talk to them again soon. Really hope you check out their channels. Nobody's paying me for any of this stuff, by the way. I'm just being honest with you. Hey, there's no new Wild West extravaganza out today. You need something to listen to or watch. Here you go. If you're looking for podcast recommendations, once again, I'm not being paid for any of this. But why have you not yet listened to To Be a Rebel? David has most recently covered John Brown, as well as the civil rights activist Ida B. Wells. My man David Lambert has made yet another appearance on the Wrong Real podcast. Check that out to hear him speak all about the movie Winchester 73. I can't remember if he was on Mushrooms or not, but it was a good episode. And if you just can't get enough of the Old West movie podcast, please check out How the West Was Cast. I plan on speaking more about these guys on an upcoming episode, but... One of them's a screenwriter and journalist. The other one's a film historian and professor. They're both smart guys that speak really good English, unlike me. And they not only discuss the beloved masterpieces of Old West cinema, but the forgotten treasures and curious cult movies as well. All things Western film related. That's how the West was cast. And of course, my BFF Michael over there at Texas History Lessons. Speaking of book recommendations, I believe he is currently working on an episode all about Elmer Kelton, the Western author, and what his books have to offer historically. Check out my newsletter, link in the show notes, or at wildwestjosh.substack.com. And remember, next Wednesday at the ass crack of dawn, we ride with Billy himself. Regulators! Mount up. Mount up.